at this point, you've probably heard the term cloud computing. And the, one of the problems with the term is that many different organizations are making the word stand for something else. The marketing departments have been very good about taking the term the cloud and having it mean what they would like it to mean. So what we're going to do is really focus on three primary areas of cloud computing that are pretty well established in our industry right now. One is something called platform as a service. And you'll see this abbreviated as PaaS. This means that you don't have any server you don't have any software, you don't have a maintenance team, you don't have a data center. Your entire systems that are providing services for your end users are completely self-contained somewhere else. You're relying on a third party to make sure that the the, the resources that you've created in your organization are now running on somebody else's platform out there in the cloud. And this, this is a nice capability because you can really focus on your product and how it works and have somebody else handle all the IT piece of it. And that's a, a nice part about using platform as a service is you don't have those infrastructure concerns. From a security perspective, you really don't have any control over any uh, anything that's running on the platform. The people who are doing the maintenance on it, you don't have control over the infrastructure itself. You usually don't get to decide how much of redundancy is there and how much is not there. You have other people watching your things. And so you have to really count on the people that you're using as this platform as a service to make sure that they're trained professionals, you can trust the organization, and that you're, nothing is going to happen to your data. Because very often the data is the, really the only thing you have. And of course, very important thing that you have. A good example of, of this platform as a service is an organization called Salesforce.com. They have a, a very interesting and very popular offering where they will allow you to put your entire uh, customer access, customer resources. Uh, you can run your help desk from, so from salesforce.com. You can put your customer relationship management pieces there, all of your contact lists. When you talk to somebody, you can track what you've done. There's a huge amount of flexibility you have with salesforce.com. And if you're a small company and you need that function, you don't have to have any software. You don't have to have any infrastructure. You don't have to have any IT department. You simply sign up with salesforce.com and boom, now you have a help desk. Now you have a way to track your, your customers. Now you have a way to send them emails about your new offerings all from one central place. A really successful example of using platform as a service all in the cloud. The second of these three cloud computing types is called software as a service. And as in users, you've probably used software as a service, I'm betting. This is something that is software that's made available to you on the web, in the cloud. It is something that doesn't require you to install any software locally on your computer. Very often, it works on multiple types of computers across different operating systems. And it makes sense. Why manage your own email system? Why manage your own payroll system? When somebody already has a system like that in the cloud, you don't even have to install anything. You pop your browser up, and you're able to access that particular service. Obviously, all of your data is centralized. The application is centralized. Your data is going to be out there, and someone is going to have access to the data. That's one of the challenges you always have with cloud computing. Not only is there access to the data, but you want to be sure that the data doesn't go anywhere. So backups are, of course, of a concern, especially from a security perspective. How is that data being backed up if it is being backed up in the cloud? What do people do with those backups once they're finished with them? Do they send them off-site? Is that method of sending it off-site something that's protected so nobody else could get it get hold of your data becomes a very important consideration. And you've probably used Yahoo Mail or Google Mail or Google Docs. That software is a service. It's something you're simply using online without having to do anything special on your desktop. And that, that organization, Google or Yahoo, takes care of making sure that that software is made available to you. The last cloud computing type we'll look at is infrastructure as a service. You might also see this called hardware as a service. This is simply you outsourcing your hardware. You would like to do the administration of your web servers. You would like to administer your email servers, but you don't want to set up a big data center or any data center to do this. You can have all of your hardware outsourced. You're still responsible for making sure that system is going to run. And if that system fails, you're responsible for getting it up and running. You don't have a staff of people. In fact, most of the time, the people who you are using their hardware don't have access to log into that hardware. You are the one who is really creating the security profile 
for everything that's on those machines that you're using. So in a way, you get a lot of control over that when you're implementing this type of cloud computing infrastructure. And, you know, your data is still out on the web. It's still out in the cloud. Somebody who was able to take advantage of an exploit that perhaps you did not patch on that server would still have access to your data because it's not inside your organization. It's not behind one of your firewalls. But at least you have that control. And if you're trying to lower your costs so you don't have to build a big data center with cooling systems and a staff of people to run it, you might be able to save a lot of costs. I use infrastructure as a service to maintain the ProfessorMesser.com website. That's a web server that is somewhere. I don't even know where the server is. I just purchased access to a web server over the internet. And I put my website on there, and I put my data, and I make sure that it has the latest patches. And I make sure that nothing on that server contains sensitive information. It's all stored off-site with other providers who handle that piece of it. I just keep my web server there. So it's a very, very simple way to, to have this capability to have a web server that's available to the world. And I don't have it at my house. I don't have to worry about something with that hardware not working. I'm using infrastructure as a service to provide that to me and make sure that I'm able to provide these services to you.